Hello everyone, welcome to, I guess, a Destiny News mini edition, where today we're just going to take a quick look at the podcast and the recent weekly update, along with some new screenshots and armor sets. So first, the podcast. This podcast is probably my favorite of the podcasts thus far, because they go into design philosophies for both single player and multiplayer. So if you're into that kind of stuff like I am, you should definitely listen to the full podcast. There wasn't much in terms of new game information, but a couple of details were spilled about multiplayer. We'll start with the second half, which covers the design philosophy behind multiplayer. I think the best point made here was this simple statement. Everyone is awesome, but there's a counter. They are really working on making sure that there is no best way to play and making the game fast, but still strategic. At 5320, the following is said about super abilities in multiplayer play. I have reasons to live and stay alive, so I'm, yeah. I'm constantly not just thinking about, I need to put shots on a guy, I need to run really fast through the map, find a guy, put shots on him. I'm thinking about, like, well, if I do that, I'm probably going to die, and then I'm feeding them supers, right? Mm-hmm. So I have to be really smart about how I approach a situation. I have to yep. think about the weapon set that I'm bringing in and play to my preferred play style. I want to stay alive for longer. Yeah, that's you, how I'm going to get these supers and that's how I'm going <laughs> to yeah. unleash fury on people. And if I die, all that's going to do is, is like accelerate our loss. So basically, it sounds like gaining access to your super abilities may act as sort of a kill streak. Others think it may simply be the act of staying alive that grants you your abilities, but I think the first part if I die, I'm feeding them supers, leans more towards killstreak-based super abilities. Around the 56 minute mark, there is a mention of a grenade called the Arc Prox, which is basically a proximity mine that deals electrical damage whenever it detects a player. It does this four separate times as well. They go on to say this. Yeah, I remember when those grenades first came on, I was playing the Warlock, and like the Axiom Bolt came on, and it was just this great, wonderful yeah, thing where I'm like, I've got... screwed so many people over <laughs> with that thing. Like Everyone's like, how many Nova Bombs does Urk have? And, oh, it's, just probably, it's just Axiom Bolt. That's an Axiom Bolt. It's, it's different. Fine. So, Axiom Bolt. Based on the phrase, I remember when those grenades first came on, it appears to be another grenade. Also, one of my Twitch mods came across this find in Vidoc 2, where we see our first glimpse of multiplayer. The clip is really short, but this may be the Axion Bolt in action. Compared to the Nova Bomb, it seems to fit the discussion quite well. They also reference Golden Gun a lot, which confused me, because Game Informer referenced Golden Gun as Ghost Gun. I asked for clarification from Urk, and he said the name of Golden Gun is not final just yet. Another thing referenced was the Titan Shoulder Charge. Lars mentions a story where he uses this ability on an opposing player. Yeah. I had this, I have this ability while well, on the Titan that I was just playing where I can sprint and then do a shoulder rush and uh, kill dudes, but they see you coming a mile away and it's, you know, you can counter it if you know what you're doing, but I'm, I'm shoulder <laughs> charging towards Josh. He doesn't see me. He snaps Golden Gun on, turns towards me at the last second. I shoulder charge him right in the face and it was so awesome. <laughs> Does anyone remember this little tidbit from the Titan video I made? The second ability, which might be a focus neutral ability, could be something like a dash in order to get into range of your enemies to shoot them, get away, or get close enough to use Fist of Havoc. Yep, I think I'm onto something. The last thing I want to point out was the mention of using your secondary movement skills. While gliding, sliding, double jumping, or whatever skills they're going to give us, you won't be able to use your weapon. I don't know if this will apply for the regular jump skill, but using these secondary skills disables gunplay. For example, in Battlefield 4, you can't shoot while just regular jumping. That's what I mean by the regular jump. So this section actually gave us a little bit of game information. The first half of the podcast discusses the design philosophy of the investment part of the game, why they chose to do the things that they did and how they're approaching it. One thing that really stuck out to me was them mentioning that the investment team thinks they failed if everyone is using the same weapon. This is something I don't think enough investment games realize. If everyone is using the same gun, there's no sense of being unique and there's obviously no sense of balance, in this case gun balance. I wouldn't call it an absolute failure, but I'm glad to see this recognized now instead of three months into the game if we're all using the same weapon. Another thing they mentioned was when they changed a build to make the Hunter layout from the hand cannon being a secondary to a primary and how it affected the player's self-identity. 
It's unknown if this change will stick around until the game's release. All in all, this was a very, very good podcast to listen to. I enjoyed this one the absolute most out of any of the podcasts, and I highly, highly recommend listening to it. So now let's take a brief look at the weekly update and some screenshots. The weekly update covered some war stories of Bungie employees playing the winter build, and they released some new screenshots. I got quite a few people telling me about these screenshots, and the reason why I didn't mention them at first is because these screenshots used to be exclusive Game Informer images. They were from the magazine, so I wasn't really allowed to show them on screen or show them in a video or anything. But now that Bungie has released them, I can talk about them. But there's nothing overwhelmingly new in these screenshots if you've been following the game. They're just very, very cool. And also, to clarify, the lack of an aim reticule is for screenshot purposes only. It's just to make the image look nicer. There are also these armor sets that people have been asking me about. These are technically Game Informer exclusive as well, but given that they've been spilled all over the place already, I think it's okay to show them. They show a few of the different varieties of armor sets that may be in the game. My favorite is this Titan armor, which makes you look like a Vex robot. I just think it's awesome. As for the mail sack, Bungie clarified that there will be no Guardian vs. Guardian action in the open world, but I wouldn't rule out the possibility of a designated PvP zone. Also, the Destiny drawing board will be returning soon, but they won't be looking at guns anymore, we'll be looking at the rest of the armory. What that is, I guess we'll find out. Well, that about wraps it up. Lots of little details here and there for the past week. Anything you guys want to talk about? Let me know in the comments. Let's hear it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.